Let's proceed now with an example of this simplest architecture. What we want to do now is write a program which pops up a single button dialog box three times. The first time saying case 0, next saying case 1, third saying case 2, and then automatically stopping. We could achieve this based on the structures we previously know using, for example, the sequence structure. In this case, however, let's proceed with the example as a state machine. So we need first a while loop, and secondly, remember that the basic structure of a state machine is a case structure within a while loop. In this case, we're going to, as mentioned, use the simplest method, which involves using the loop index terminal directly as an input to the case selector. Recall the first time through a while loop, the value out of the index terminal will be zero. So our first case is actually zero. In this case, as mentioned, we wanted to create a one button dialog which pops up and says, this is case zero. So we could do that just by using a string constant. However, in this case, we're going to use the format into string function. We're going to take the value out, in this case, of our selector terminal. We're going to create a format string. as seen. This is case number sign and then the format character percent %d which will take the numeric input and format it into a string as a decimal number. So the first time through this loop the value here will be 0, the value coming out of the selector terminal again will be 0, and so the output of this format into string function will be the string this is case number 0. Finally we're going to place that in a one button dialog, connect the resulting string to the message, and the only remaining activity left for this particular case is to make sure that the loop does not stop. And the way we do that is we output a false constant through a tunnel into the end condition terminal of the while loop. So now we've got case 0 defined. What we now want to do is after case 0 is completed then we want to run the next case. Now naturally because it's the loop index terminal which is selecting which case is going to run, the second time through the loop we will be in case 1. Now by default whenever you create a case structure you automatically get the two cases. We're going to just right now right click, choose remove empty cases, and this will discard that case 1 which we had automatically created. What we're going to do now is take advantage of the architecture that we chose here. Right click on this case and choose duplicate case. Recall the behavior of duplicate case is to make an exact copy of the existing code for the next available selection. Naturally the next available selection is 1. We see now immediately the advantage of using the format into string function rather than using a string constant. Right now we don't have to make any changes to this code. It's automatically the second time through the loop going to say this is case number 1. Pop it into a one button dialog and output a false into our end condition terminal. So recall the third requirement that was that we have a third case. Again, we're going to repeat the same process, duplicate case, which is going to automatically create case number two. And the only difference here is that when this case runs, we want to output a constant true, which in this case is going to stop the while loop. Let's run our code with execution highlighting turned on and observe the behavior. First time through the loop, of course, we get our zero and we get our one button dialog. The one button dialog box is waiting for us to click OK. As soon as we do so, the loop continues. This is case number one, and finally, this is case number two, and observe that because we have a true coming out the tunnel, now the loop will stop. 